Hi guys, it is a miserable cold winter day here in the end times in South Austin, Texas. Somehow we have stumbled into Tuesday morning, December 2nd, 2014, and I've got to stumble off to my new job selling at the Optimist Club, selling Christmas trees to clueless morons. But being Tuesday, I have just enough time to squeeze in my wacky Tuesday conspiracy theory rant, which unfortunately, as I mentioned last week, is getting a little tougher for me to do because uh, my favorite conspiracy wacko and I had a little falling out over Alex Jones. And so I'm no longer getting fed all of this unadulterated horseshit conspiratorial stuff. So I'm back on the mainstream media. And I, I just love these, uh, speaking of Alex Jones and conspiratards, don't, don't you love it how Alex, he is always trashing the mainstream media about what absolute lying sacks of shit and tools of the New World Order and, and all of that stuff are. Now sometimes, now, now, sometimes that criticism is correct, but then what they do is, after trashing the mainstream media and saying you cannot believe anything you read in the mainstream media, then when the mainstream media brings out a story that confirms the conspiratard worldview, although usually a lot more toned down, what does Alex Jones do? He gets up there and whoo, 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 whatever <coughs> Alex does, you know, pointing to the headlines in the mainstream media as evidence that the conspirators are right, right after saying everything in the mainstream media is unadulterated horseshit. So I don't know what to make of all that. But anyway, uh, I'm just going to go through, I found four stories here, right here on the mainstream media this morning on December 2nd, 2014, that play into uh, the, the wacky conspiracy theory angles that your, your old doomsday optimist uh, agrees with 100%. Uh, you know, as I say, about 20% out of the shit rolling out of Alex Jones's mouth is spot on true. And we're going to look at, uh, what are we going to look at today? We're going to look at militarized police. We're going to look at, of course, drones, robots, DARPA. It, it, it's all here. Let me, let's start off. With, with, with this story, uh, which is kind of a mixed bag in the mainstream media about uh, unadulterated horseshit and, and spot-on truth, depending on how deep in the article you get. This is from the from the Atlantic Wire, I believe. This the Wire, which I think is the Atlantic Wire. Obama's cautious first step toward demilitarizing the police. This, this is uh, talking about how Barack Obama, who I think under Barack Obama's watch, the, uh, the, the cops, and we're talking the local police departments in this country, have started to take on truly Mad Max, uh, Blade Runner proportions under his watch, first step toward demilitarizing the police. Yeah, how about the, the marathon race towards militarizing the police under his watch? And uh, his cautious first step. Anyone, anyone thinking that Barack Obama or any other president, Republican, Democrat, Demopublican, Republicrat uh, is going to do one goddamn thing towards demilitarizing the police in this country. I got something to tell you. Oh, come on 
now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. But anyway, how is the mainstream media playing this up? Let's see. <clears throat> The photo in here, which I wouldn't work if I tried to show it to you, you it, is, it is a great photo. <coughs> Just making a complete mockery. A complete mockery. Uh, th th this is the way these editors get to give you the truth between the lies of the photo. Okay. Amid high tensions between urban communities, it's not just urban guys, uh, and the officers that police them, the Obama administration on Monday made its first move toward limiting the use of heavy military equipment by local law enforcement agencies, as, as Alex reports all the time about how all of the these local uh, police departments and sheriff departments buying this uh, this heavy duty military shit from the Pentagon at fire sale prices to bring uh, I, I guess the attacks on Iraq and Afghanistan to Peoria <coughs> Okay, so what did the White <coughs> the White House call for yesterday? Well, it called for local police officers to receive more training before using military equipment acquired from the government. <coughs> now, now of course, this this training can can go both ways. You, you can be trained to uh, to tear gas a hundred thousand people as well. A anyway, okay, we won't we won't talk about that end of it. Let's see what else did Farrak or the White House ask Congress for two hundred sixty three million dollars of taxpayers' money for body cameras, body cameras, training, and other resources for local law enforcement. <clears throat> there you go. This, sound, this sounds like all, all sorts of ways to reduce the militarization of uh, the police. Okay, let me just quote from this uh, the, this this report before moving along because I gotta get I, I gotta get moving along. All right, <clears throat> quote: Federal equipment programs provide for the reuse of valuable equipment, otherwise known as valuable equipment, designed for the sole purpose of killing people <clears throat> and have contributed to the protection of the public and to reduced operational risk to peace officers otherwise known as war officers who put their lives on the line every day to keep the American people Safe. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. <clears throat> no, they put their lives on the line every day to keep their own asses safe. Anyway, continuing with the part, quote, <clears throat> At the same time when police lack adequate training, make poor operational choices or improperly use equipment, these programs can facilitate excessive use of force and serve as a highly visible barrier between police and the communities they secure. 
Yep, I would call a Sherman tank uh, a highly visible barrier between police and the communities they secure. All right, well, I, I hope you feel more secure now knowing that Barack Obama is looking out for your best interest in any way this article goes on with this. But anyway, let's move along from tanks rolling through the streets of Peoria over there, it being the, uh, the holiday season. Let's look at what Amazon.com is up to this year. Uh, th there is all sorts of rants on. I, I could go off on a million tangents in this story. Uh, from, who is it from? Good old Associated Press. And, uh, I, whatever happened to those little Amazon delivery drones? that they were talking about last year. Well, they're still not here. They're still working on that. Don't worry. The, the delivery drones are still in the works. Not quite ready this year, but what is ready up and running this year is Amazon's new robot army is ready to ship. Amazon's robot army. Oh, good lord. So while the drones are still on the drawing board, we have seen this year Amazon has boosted its efficiency and given workers' legs a break. I, I, I assume that was an intentional pun. Given workers' legs a break by deploying more than 15,000, 15,000 robots to crisscross the floors of its biggest warehouses and deliver stacks of toys, books, and other products to the employees where they can take over. Yeah, uh, and, and I'm going to... I, I, the, the, most of the story is actually talking about uh, how much Amazon.com, uh, this planet-eating crap, is being sold. Uh, anyway, let me, I'm going to get back to that, and that's a whole separate rant. CEO Jeff Bezos vows to one day deliver packages by drone, but that technology uh, isn't ready yet. But what is ready are these 15,000 drones working uh, at how, good God. Uh, what I wanted to, uh, oh yeah, here we go down near the bottom of the story. If you're one of these wacky conspirators like that, that old silly Alex Jones talking about how all of these goddamn robots from Amazon.com from here to China and everywhere in between are going to eliminate human jobs. Mr. Bezos no, this is some other uh, spokesman for Amazon. Mr. Clark uh, is quick to assert that Amazon's new robots will not eliminate jobs in the future. Although they will cut operating costs by 20%. Quote, we are continuing to grow Growth has always driven hiring, meaning hiring of humans, and the company has, in fact, increased its workforce by more than a third. So all of you conspiratards can go back to sleep. 
but when you when you start analyzing it a little more good old AP at the very bottom of the story however a 10,000 strong fleet of robots I thought it was 15,000 could help Amazon save up to nine hundred million dollars a year in labor expenses according to there's some guy who studies stuff like this by allowing Amazon to store and ship more goods from each shipping center the robots will likely reduce the number of new centers that Amazon will have to build and staff as it grows. Um, this is one of these analysts compares Amazon's use of, drone, uh, of robots to the automakers growing use of robots on their assembly lines which has reduced the number of worker hours required to build a car by human hands. And I could go on to a whole new rant about Black Friday and Cyber Monday and clueless morons and blah blah blah. But anyway, this is a, a conspiracy wacko rant. All right, let's see. So that's what Amazon is up to in the mainstream media today. Sticking with Associated Press, what is MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, using their little DARPA grant, their little defense grant? Uh, the, I, I, anyone who does not understand how the Pentagon has American universities in their pocket, all you got to do is look at DARPA. Uh, you know, Alex always ranting as he should be about DARPA, uh, which is in the business of developing products to kill people. That is what DARPA does. It kills people. And who do you think designs this shit to kill people? It's all of these universities taking the grants to develop these products. And what's the latest product? Although I've been talking about this one, I think, for like six months. This is MIT engineers have high hopes for the cheetah robot. The cheetah robot is a robot unlike any other robot. Inspired by the world's fastest land animal, it is controlled by video game technology and packing nifty sensors. Nifty sensors including <coughs> including uh, the ability to maneuver drones, satellites, and ballistic missiles. There you go. So this is a robot uh, being given uh, the, the power to maneuver drones, satellites, and ballistic missiles. So it looks like even human soldiers are getting replaced by robots. <clears throat> the robot called the Cheetah can run on batteries at speeds of more than 10 miles an hour, jump 16 inches high, land safely, and continue galloping for at least 15 minutes all while using less power than a microwave oven. And it is the newest creation of researchers at good old MIT. And this is, as MIT professor says, this is the Ferrari in the robotics world. And then it talks about all the good that the cheetah robot with its ability 
to maneuver drone satellites and ballistic missiles all the ways that the cheetah robot is going to help the planet and then down near the bottom we see the project is funded by the US Department of Defense's Defense Advance Research Projects Agency, otherwise known as DARPA. And the military research arm is also funding a similar robot being developed by Boston Dynamics. Oh, the closing quote <laughs> the closing quote about this robot, quote, in the next 10 years, our goal is we are trying to make this robot, we are trying to make this robot to save a life. To save a life. There you go. That is that life-saving robot coming at you, maneuvering those drones and ballistic missiles. That was bullshit. Okay, and as long as we're mentioning drones, now, now this one is an interesting one coming from TakePart.com. This is the, the double-edged sword of drones. And this story is, Will ask the questions, Will new U.S. regulations shoot down drones that help save wildlife? And so as we're, as, you know, this is one of, the, one of these situations why I'm on the drone fence, that these drones are a, a great conservation tool used by uh, all these various environmental organizations, even Sea Shepherds Society, you know, sending out their little drones to uh, keep track of these goddamn whale killers. And over there in Africa, although that's not being uh, discussed here, you know, these drones used to track rhino and elephant poachers and so on and so forth. They're using the drones to keep, uh, you know, to spy on illegal loggers. Uh, there's, uh, you know, this is a, it's a, it's an interesting argument here, guys. All right. But what does the mainstream media have to say about this? In recent years, drones have become a powerful weapon in the hands of conservationists around the world for fighting wildlife poachers and whale hunters. Blah, blah, blah. And companies, uh, and then they're talking about detecting oil pipeline leaks. Blah, blah, blah. All right. But the United States government could effectively ground a new class of small autonomous drones if it adopts proposed regulations that would severely limit their use in American airspace. The FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, is considering banning the use of drones unless they are operated by a licensed pilot fly below 400 feet and are only used during the day. And at least uh, the silver lining, I guess, for the tree huggers is that in uh, the vast majority of other countries that these drones are completely unregulated such as Pakistan, but that is a whole nother rant uh, about those drones. As this guy from Brendan Duffy from Conservation 
drones.org, an international nonprofit that promotes the use of drones <coughs> to preserve wildlife in the environment, uh, says, don't worry, mostly other countries are far easier to get permission to conduct drone work. Duffy noted that the United Kingdom, Australia, and other... I, I love this. The United Kingdom, Australia, and other companies... <laughs> UK uh, Incorporated and, and other companies permit the commercial use of drones. Anywho, so uh, we'll see how that plays out. But yes, it, 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 I love it when your old uh, when your old eco Nazi when your old eco Nazi meets your old conspiracy wacko within the same brain. Oh my God. Uh, I'm going to sign on the side of drones uh, on this one. Uh, oh, well, guys, it, it, it is a crazy, confusing time to be on this planet. Any, anyone who acts like these aren't, that the end times aren't interesting times, may you live in interesting times. I think wasn't wasn't that Confucius who that that, uh, that blessing curse may you live in interesting times, and I got to get back to my own life in interesting times at the Optimist Club Christmas tree lot. So for this week's wacky conspiracy rant, I will say bye guys.